Hey everyone, this is Teo from Parkablocks.com. In today's video, I'm going to review the Copic drawing pen. This is F01. This is actually a disposable fountain pen. So we have a fountain pen nib here. This is a very plain looking nib with no design on top. There is no breather hole as well. This is the fit section that is behind. This nib is not removable, so this is stuck to the pen. I bought this pen a long time ago, so I cannot remember the exact price, but I do remember that this is a bit pricey. The build quality is alright, it feels a bit cheap because everything is made of plastic. We have the plastic cap, um, which is made of the same material as the body of the pen. It feels very lightweight. But overall, it still feels quite comfortable to hold. You can post the cap at the back if you want to, but I usually use it without the cap. On the side of the pen here, it says that it's Copic proof. So later on, I'll be using this pen with some Copic markers to see whether or not the line will actually smear or smirch or feather when I apply Copic markers on top of the lines. The highlight of this pen is the thin lines that it can create. The nib is actually quite stiff, so there is not a lot of flex, although if you press down a bit harder, you can get a slightly thicker line. So for those people who like pens that create very thin lines, this can be a pen to consider. Ink flow is quite smooth. I'm actually using this pen on fine grain cartridge paper so there is some texture to the strokes. Overall, their lines, they have very sharp edges. The lines are very uniform. And the ink is quite dark. It's not totally black, but it's very dark. So let me press down a bit to get some thicker lines. This is a very nice pen for patching because it can create very thin lines. And now let's use this pen to do some drawing. I'm just going to draw something very simple today, just a coconut tree, just to compare this pen with other fountain pens that I have. Ink flow is all right, but some areas here, if you draw a bit uh, faster, the ink flow is not able to catch up and overall I can see that the line width, the thickness of the line, it's quite even. And now let me switch over to using the Platinum Desk Pen. This is the DP1000AN. This is a fountain pen with really fine lines. So again, I'm going to draw the same thing and press down a bit harder to see if I can get thicker lines. Now this desk pen, the lines are even thinner compared to the Copic drawing pen F01. And it feels a bit uh, scratchier because the tip is so fine. This is also an excellent pen when it comes to hatching because the lines, they are so fine. The Platinum Desk Pen is refillable because you can buy a Platinum Ink cartridge to use with your own ink. But the Copic Drawing Pen, this is a disposable pen. There is no way to refill it. I'm not able to pull this part out. So even if I want to refill it, I cannot. Let me switch over to using another pen that I have here today. This is the Namiki Falcon. This Namiki Falcon that I have, it uses SF nib, so there is some flex in it. So I can definitely get thicker lines compared to the other two pens. Ink flow is fantastic. I'm using Noodler's Bulletproof Black Ink, by the way, which is a very slow drawing ink so I will not be using markers over the lines because I'm very sure 
the lines they will still be wet later on it takes a long time to um, dry the ink even under the sun and the last pen that I want to compare with is the Nudelus Conrad by the way I just um, chose the pens randomly from my drawer so let's um, see how this pen fares the pen is quite smooth on this paper ink flow is also quite nice this pen has a refillable um, ink reservoir so you can refill it very easily and that's really the advantage of um, real fountain pens you can refill them with your own ink so in the long run it's really economical rather than just buying a disposable pen and throw it away each time it runs out of ink I can get some really thin lines with this pen as well and if I press down a bit harder I can get really thick lines so this is quite nice alright let's take a look at the drawings side by side so each pen has its own characteristics let's take a look at the Copic drawing pen F01 this pen can produce very thin lines if you press down a bit harder you can get slightly thicker lines but I will not consider this to be a flex pen so this is more like a technical um, drawing pen earlier I said that the ink flow um, it can be a bit dry if you draw very fast so if you are drawing this kind of uh, at this kind of speed you can get some uh, texture going on with the lines so you can create an area with textured hatching lines like this of all the fountain pens that I own the one that produces the thinnest line is the platinum desk pen and the lines they are usually very uniform this is not a flex pen but again if you do want to press down a bit harder you can get slightly thicker lines just very slightly thicker lines let's take a look at Namiki Falcon so the difference between Namiki Falcon and Platinum I think is quite obvious in fact these two drawings are really quite different compared to these two drawings because the lines they are visibly thicker Namiki Falcon does offer a bit more flex the nib is a bit softer so you can get very nice transition between thin and thick like this and it seems like the Noodler's Conrad you can get thinner lines when it comes to hatching and for Noodler's Conrad again this is uh, a pen with a nib that can flex a bit more compared to the Copic and the Platinum so you can get some nice variations as well in terms of thickness I'm not sure if you can see clearly but when I'm drawing this line is like the ink flow the ink flow is nice but it's not as generous compared to the Namiki Falcon here the lines they are visibly darker and here you can see that uh, when the lines are slightly thinner you can see that they are not totally black I guess you can see that a bit more clearly here versus here so the lines here they are darker and this is slightly faded as for the pricing the most expensive one is Namiki Falcon followed by Noodles Conrad and then Platinum Desk Pen and then the Copic F01 and now I want to test some markers on the lines so let's uh, try and color this coconut tree so the ink is so-called copic proof the color that I'm using by the way it's warm gray and they are quite resistant to smearing so I can use Copic over those lines a few times and they do not smear so that's great earlier on I said that the Noodleless ink they take a long time to dry so I'm going to see if the ink has dried 
and it looks like the ink has dried so that's great but usually for fountain pen inks you do have to wait for a while for them to dry the ink from the Copic pen it dries relatively fast in case you're wondering if the ink is waterproof so let me just test this out it seems like the ink is not waterproof so the ink in this pen is so-called Copic proof but it is not waterproof by Copic proof I guess it means that the ink is resistant to alcohol based markers but since it's not waterproof I do not recommend this pen for use with water-based medium like watercolor or markers or brush pens with water-based inks Overall, I do not think that this is a very special pen, even though it uses a fountain pen nib. The Copic markers are nice, but this drawing pen, this drawing pen really is nothing special, especially when you compare it to other disposable pens. And also the ink here is not waterproof. So um, in terms of value, I would say that this is just a so-so pen. By the way, if you are looking for a disposable pen with waterproof ink and the pen has the ability to draw thin and thick lines, I would recommend you check out the Uniball Air. The Uniball Air is a fantastic pen that in many ways is better than this and it's cheaper as well. I will put the link to the review for the Uniball Air in the video description below so that you can check it out. And that's all for my review today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.